Sometimes in a series lifespan, a creator or creators will host a contest where readers or fans can submit ideas that will be used in or make an appearance during the series itself. And this holds true for even Horikoshi and Boku no My Hero Sopademia, as in 2016, a contest of that nature was held over Pixiv, where fans of Hiroaka could submit their own original characters for a chance to be highlighted and turned into a full-on character in the series, and two managed to catch the eye of Horikoshi, but one was considered the winner. This being the hard-working, suds and scent sling sidekick Koroku Owada, also known as Bubble Girl. Sleep to a jazz tune. Bubble Girl is a pro hero and member of Sir Night Eye's Hero Agency, acting as his sidekick and manager during a period of his active hero work in the series. She also is a key member in taking down the Eight Precepts of Death, helping not only organize information and reporting on the gang and their actions, along with participating in the raid of the Eight Precepts mansion itself, cleaning up and arresting strays as the main cast goes after the bigger and more dangerous threats. And while she might not have been the most major fighter in the raid, her role during the whole operation is undeniable and post this operation, she, alongside her partner, inherit a lot of responsibility. Though before we discuss this any further, we should look at the meaning behind her name. So Bubble Girl, or Karuko Owada, while not being named by Horikoshi himself, follows the normal naming themes of Hiroaka quite well, starting first with her given name, Koroku, as when broken down, the Koru portion of the name translates to fragrance or aroma, while having a specific connection to a pleasant smelling aroma. And then you have the Ko portion of her name, which means both child or small, and this was likely originally planned to mean child as Bubble Girl when she was originally pitched as a character in the contest was a 16 year old student at UA but Horikoshi aged her up to fit her role in the series better as a sidekick instead of a student so the child meaning likely more took on a small meaning so altogether her name means small fragrance and then you have her family name Iwata which when broken down contains the characters for both bubble and field so together her name means field of bubbles or bubbles in the field and then you add her given name into this altogether they translate to small fragrance of a field of bubbles, which actually plays quite well with Bubble Girl's own quirk, this being Bubble. Bubble is an emitter style quirk which allows Bubble Girl to naturally produce small bubble-like shapes from her body. Though these bubbles aren't purely soap bubbles, they do seem to take on the qualities of soap bubbles, this being that they are lightweight and float in the air, though they are not comprised of soap. They're actually made up of Bubble Girl's own biomass and filled with an aroma of her choice as well, as Bubble allows Awada to create either a sweet-smelling bubble or an awful stinking one. The only requirement for this is that Iwata herself had to have smelt this aroma or stench at some point in her life so that she can recreate it. So I guess in this situation you can say she who dealt it has in fact smelt it. Along with this, even though she creates the bubbles from her biomass, she doesn't seem to be able to control the bubbles movements themselves, more so using her own motions to move the bubbles in the air so that they can be positioned for a place where they would be useful. Along with this, the bubble scent themselves seem to also be impacted by her mood, as when Bubble Girl gets overwhelmed with nervousness, she produces a very unpleasant smelling bubble that will actively self-destruct on creation, which is likely a reference to natural human gases or flatulation, and is something that's actually on the original character sheet itself that was submitted to this contest, likely to her own embarrassment, which is also likely her drive for her prioritization and enjoyment of cleanliness, with her favorite thing on her character sheet being baths, or that could just be a reference to bubble baths, but either works in this situation, though one aspect of this quirk might have actually been lost in the transferring from fan creation to actual official character, and that's that Bubble Girl's body seemed to have been made of some sort of watery bubble-like substance that the quirk is made from, with her body having a slight transparency to it in the original artwork, and also having exposed skin, likely for the same reason that Momo's hero costume is designed the way it is, as her quirk is produced from her skin, and to cover it up could negatively impact her effectiveness at hero work. Along with this, she she wears a mask similar in design to that of a gas mask, which suggests that Bubble Girl is not immune to the smells of her own bubbles, so to prevent herself from being distracted by this, she wears a gas mask of sorts. The gas mask also has some similarities to that of a diver's mask, so that could be an intentional design decision given the connection between baths, bubbles, and overall water. Now the influences over this design and the quirk itself I'm not exactly sure on given the nature of it being a fan work and I can't actually ask the original creator themselves 
felt. But I do think I have a reason for why Horikoshi might have picked this idea. As when deciding on which character he was going to add, he likely looked at the submissions from the perspective of who would fit the role of Night Eye's assistant. He likely had the idea of Night Eye planned out before this, so it would need to be someone with some level of humor to them, given that that's the type of person that Night Eye would hire. And given that one of the most notable aspects of Bubble Girl's quirk is the fact that it's partly a fart joke, I can see why he chose her. Especially since he could put her in positions and scenes where she would be the most stressed out possible, resulting in that joke coming to fruition. I'm actually shocked we never saw a scene where that gets brought up. But speaking of scenes involving Bubble Girl, Bubble Girl's introduction to the series is rather interesting. Horikoshi mentioned in her character bio that he wanted to make sure that her introduction was memorable in a way that would stick out to the readers, as he didn't want someone who won a design contest to be so easily missable by the readers. So, he designed a scene where she would be placed in an unforgettable, dynamic pose that not only cemented her character in the reader's minds, but also helped establish what kind of person Night Eye was. Which sounds very good on the surface, it's almost noble of Horikoshi to include such a scene for someone who had just won a fan contest. But then we get to the scene itself, and that scene being Bubble Girl strapped to a tickle machine being subjected to tickle torture for not being funny enough. It was certainly unforgettable, some might even say unforgivable. Well, this scene did its job perfectly well, establishing Sir Night Eye's character in a great way, as someone who blends together humor and seriousness into a seriously strange persona. But he also allowed Bubble Girl to shine as she is the lead sidekick of Sir Night Eye, not only maintaining surveillance on the eight precepts of death while Sir Night Eye focused on more business matters for his company, but also in the race she stayed behind to help subdue any of the lower end gang members left behind in the wake of the main party's journey through the mansion itself. She even shows up with Centipeter to detain other members of the actual eight precepts, post their battles, and assisting and helping out the injured people. Though this raid would change her life and Centipeter's life forever, as during the fights, her boss, Sir Night Eye, would suffer from a fatal injury, passing away within the hospital and leaving the organization to Centipeter and Bubble Girl, his two closest assistants. Though with his passing, the operations of his organization were brought to basically a bureaucratic standstill, being flooded with paperwork and barely being able to operate effectively. So, they can't perform work studies or assist in major events. Though they do make sure to tell Mirio that he's always has a place at Sir Night Eye's agency, as he was Sir Night Eye's star pupil, and basically family to them. And with that that all said and done, I feel like Bubble Girl is a very interesting figure in the history of Hiroaka, as someone who, while not being an extremely major figure in the story, is extremely unique nonetheless. And I don't expect her to do much beyond cameos and chapters and maybe celebrating major events like maybe Mirio's recovery or Deku's achievements. I'd be happy to be wrong if Horikoshi wanted to bring her back and give her more spotlight. But given we have a pro hero like Wash, who is top rated and has a similar power set, I doubt we'll see Bubble girl again but you know always hold out hope and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like in the future i have a patreon at patreon.com slash many not the bad guy patreon is a very useful tool for me in helping this channel maintain its stability so any little bit helps and if you want to be nice and clean you can learn how to by buying a copy of shimanetta a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at buyshimanetta.com